you can go ahead and take over. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Rebecca Jenkins. I'm from Cambridge Air Solutions, and I'm our project manager of technical training. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how knowledge transfer is life enrichment. Now, that sounds like a really big statement, but here at Cambridge Air Solutions, that we, that's what we do. We endeavor to enrich the quality of every life that we touch, whether that be our customers, our employees, um, vendors, visitors, and today I hope uh, webinar attendees. So um, in order to understand this, you need to understand more about our culture. So I'm going to go ahead and share a video with you guys um, that talks a lot about who we are and why we exist. So. You guys can hear sound? As I've been in business yes. for quite some time, I've wanted to rally people around something, a cause or reason why we exist. Cambridge exists to glorify God by enriching the quality, quality of every life we, we touch. touch. Enriching lives is about promising to do more than heating a building. So Cambridge Air Solutions moves past any technology into what our promise is to the people that we do business with and the people that do business with us kind of knocks people off balance a little bit. They're not really sure what to think of it. We believe there's something bigger than us, and we're gonna conduct ourselves in a way that we're responsible to something bigger than us. We wanna be able to demonstrate unconditional love. If I can be unconditionally loving to those around me and just love them for who they are and not what they're doing for the company, then it can be transformative, and it really does walk out the why. The glorifying God uh, why we exist statement was finished by saying how we were going to do that. We were going to glorify God by enriching the quality of every life we touch, whether that's the people that work here, the people that come to call on us to sell us parts for our equipment, or externally when we go out to solve problems for our customer. And it's something that's a lifetime, it's a journey. And enriching lives, it's not a destination, it's about people. Anytime you come in contact with the body of Cambridge, your life is going to be better for it. This is who we are. It's what we strive to do. Do we do it perfectly? Absolutely not. But we always aspire to be better at it. There's something about the Cambridge experience and enriching lives that has been here for many years. We're just saying it the right way. It's almost like it's just a final, a final piece in a really beautiful process that we've been a part of. And so I love it. I love the fact that everything, every sticker we put on, every business card we give out, every piece of logoed stuff that I wear or anybody wears is actually going to say, we are Cambridge Air Solutions and this is what we do. We enrich lives. All right, so that is a pretty bold statement, right? We enrich lives. How do we do that? Well, we do that through our core values, which are unconditional love and high expectations, care, courage, and respect. We took this a step further recently by um, defining like specific behaviors that um, people are doing that show our core values. And you're going to see these specific uh, specific behaviors show up in this presentation just as they did in the project. Um, so let's get into it. The project, right? Every good project, every improvement story starts with a challenge. So our challenge was that Cambridge grew into a second site in 2020. Um, we just didn't have the square footage here in Chesterfield to support our current product lines, let alone the growth of those product lines or any new product lines that um, we would um, get. So uh, we expanded out to Winsville. Cambridge Chesterfield and Cambridge Winsville had some shared resources. Uh, sheet metal was one of those. They needed press breaks. They needed a panel bender. They needed a laser. And they finally gained their autonomy in 2023 with the final piece, uh, their laser. So now they can cut and form their parts pretty much all out there in Winsville. Paint line will continue to be a shared resource for us. It just doesn't make sense for us to install um, such a big piece of equipment when not all of our um, not all of our product is painted, so we can just transport those uh, parts that are painted back and forth. But resource planning management, we had one resource planning manager for both sites. That, mean, that means one guy was managing the inventory, the material handlers, the shipping and receiving for two sites. So I'd like to introduce you to a couple of people. Chad. Chad was that one guy. He was managing both sites. 
Um, he's been with our company for about six years now, and he was the only one in the company who could do what he does. He was a knowledge silo. And Leon. Leon is a production manager out in Winsville. He's been with the company for about 25 years. So he is uh, what we call a little old school. And that's gonna be important here in a little bit, you'll see why. And he was identified as the next logical person to do what Chad does out in Winsville. So how are we going to make this happen? Well, all of Chad's leaders and all of Leon's leaders along with Chad got into a big room with a big whiteboard and they started um, planning out what does Chad know what does Leon need to know and what can be delegated to somebody else? Now, there were some complicating factors here. This was the end of the calendar year and nobody had time to facilitate this transfer of knowledge. However, some of the leadership in that room knew two people who had just been to a skills lab who were primed and ready to take on this challenge. And those two people were myself and my colleague, Cameron. So we were asked to join the team and we happily volunteered. Now, the other complicating factor here was that we were brought in, Cameron and I were brought in about mid-November, and this had to be done by the end of December. So we had 21 working days to make this happen. And on top of that, we had to continue to do our regular jobs. At that time, I was an engineering technician for a couple of our product lines, and Cameron still is a supervisor for a couple of departments. So... Um, this would be complicated. So um, we set up a meeting, Cameron and I, with Chad and Leon. And in that first meeting, historically, training at Cambridge is done peer to peer. So we set out to do that. Chad made some lists, what reports he uses, uh, what forms he uses. And then he tried talking to Leon about it. He tried to tell him what he did and when he did it. He tried to give him all of his lists, but the problem was that Chad was speaking in terms that Leon didn't understand and Chad couldn't articulate how he was making decisions. So um, this method was not working for us. Uh, Leon's body language, his facial expressions, even his tone and eventually his mouth all said, this is impossible. So I realized that our list was missing something. Now job relations tells us that you need both data and facts. Our data was that whiteboard. Our data was uh, Chad's list of what he did, but the facts were that we were on a serious time crunch and there were some big feelings going on with Chad and Leon. Now, why are feelings important? Feelings are the messengers of needs. Um, I often think about this in terms of my kids. I'm a mom of three. And a lot of times when they're having big feelings, it's because there is a need that's not being met. So either they're grumpy because they didn't get very good sleep the night before and they just need a nap. They're grouchy because they're hungry and they need a snack or uh, they're stressed, overwhelmed, or angry, and they just need a moment, or maybe they need a hug. So feelings are definitely the messengers of needs. Now, why is that important to you? Meeting the needs of your people is respect. And if you are a people leader in this audience, please understand that you are in the business of meeting the needs of your people. Somebody told my boss uh, what I'm about to tell you, um, and she shared, she shared that with me so I can share it with you. Um, she said, take best care of your people so that they can do their best work. And when people do their best work, the organization gets the best results. Your organization will get the best results. So how stinking cool is that, that you are a direct influence over whether or not your organization is getting the best result just by meeting the needs of your people? That's pretty cool. And finally, meeting needs is actionable. So if somebody comes up to me and says, I'm mad. I can't do anything about that. But if they say, I'm mad and I need a minute, I can definitely help them, you know, have five minutes outside or five minutes away from a problem to cool down, right? I can actually do something about a need. All right, so what about feelings as it pertains to our project? I asked two questions. How do you feel right now? And what do you need to feel better? So Chad was feeling frustrated. It was the end of the year, end of year inventory was coming up. He's trying to manage two sites. He doesn't have time to do any of it. He was very frustrated. He was motivated. Somebody else is gonna take on one of these sites. Heck yeah, tell me where to sign. I am all in. And he was unsure that we could meet our deadline. So what did he need? He needs, needed someone to help get the information out of his head into a document that somebody else could easily understand and do something with. 
And what about Leon? Now remember, Leon is our old school guy. He was overwhelmed. He thought, he, no, like he already was leading teams of people. And now he's being asked to take on more responsibility in an area that he has little understanding about in just five weeks. He was incredibly overwhelmed. He was angry. I am telling you guys that I don't think that I have time for this and nobody's listening to me and I don't have enough details to be able to like make a case for this. He was angry and he was reluctant. So Leon is old school and he is very reluctant to change. So what did he need? He needed a definition of how the new tasks would, would affect his capacity so he could actually sit down and have a conversation with his boss about what his expectations would be. All right, so week one and two, we were in an identify stage. So I job shadowed Chad just to figure out uh, what he was doing and kind of get a peek behind the curtain of how he was making decisions. So I had Chad's list. So even the, the stuff that he had already prepared, still very valuable to this project. And I used those as well as some questions. What are you doing? How often are you doing it? How are you doing it? And why are you doing it? Now those first two questions, Chad could answer no problem. But the last two, this is what I got. I learned through many years of experience or it's just tribal knowledge. Now that's frustrating. So I knew I had to ask better questions. So I did. All of these questions or statements that you see up here, they're all open-ended questions. Now, how are those helpful? Open-ended questions prevent us from jumping to the wrong conclusions based on the assumptions or perceptions that we bring into a situation. Um, they provide insight into how people perceive situations. So just they can't just answer yes or no, they actually have to elaborate on the answers. And they um, ultimately provide better outcomes. Now, a couple of key points with um, open-ended questions, they often start with how, what, or why. The result, we had eight minimum viable product standard operating procedures for resource planning managers at Cambridge. That was knowledge that had never been documented before. And we also had some supporting uh, lists or forms or guides to go with them. Leon was actually able to try processes, which was amazing for our feedback loop. So I would create something and I would send it out. I did this early and very often. So with Leon being able to actually try these documents, he was able to tell me what made sense, what needed more clarity or, you know, areas that we could improve on with the document. And Chad and Leon were able to provide feedback for how they would work. They were the ones that were going to be doing the job. So it makes sense that they would be the ones feeding into how the document was made. This made them feel hopeful, like maybe we can actually get this done in five weeks. So week three and four, the work that we did here was Hey, Becca, Becca, we just lost your audio. No, she can't hear us. Oh, she maybe can't hear us either. <laughs> oh no, Becca. You want, hey, Skylar, you want to, sorry, everybody can probably hear us. Skylar, you want to hop on there maybe with your video and maybe that'll get, get her uh, attention. We've lost audio, Becca. We can't hear you. We can't no. hear you. Yes. <laughs> okay. What in the world? What is going on with my tech today? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> they want to start back up at the beginning of the slide. Sure. Yeah. All right, so we, we were working thank to stabilize you. in week three or four. Goodness gracious, thank you, Skylar. Um, so we needed to do some work around providing clarity around decision-making. Um, Leon had like a good understanding of our ERP system, which was where a lot of the resource planning uh, management was done. Um, he just didn't understand how decisions were being made and, or who to go to for help. Um, so we needed to do some work around clarifying that. We needed stability around supporting processes. So people have a tendency to find workarounds, uh, standards, work, working around standards whenever those standards aren't challenged. And uh, training Leon to do resource planning management was 
definitely challenging those processes. We needed clarity around shared processes between Chad and Leon. So they're both doing the same job and managing inventory that has to go back and forth between the two sites. Um, in one particular case, both sites were out of filters. Both sites went through the correct process for notifying our supply chain team that they were out of the filters, but Chad thought he was doing something good by merging those two uh, requests together, did not tell Leon, and it created a lot of chaos out in Winsville. So the new challenge, workflows in place made sense when only one person was doing the work, but now we have two. So we got to work setting some expectations. We needed to define how decisions were made in resource plan it, planning and what effect those decisions were, and then document it. Department leaders for upstream and downstream processes reviewed what we were writing because we were literally writing some of those processes that they had already said they would abide by into some of the work that Chad and Leon would be doing. Um, so we got those uh, SOPs to the department leaders, said, hey, can you review this for accuracy? They confirmed that it was accurate. So we had some more work to do around making sure we were setting expectations with those teams because it was imperative that both upstream and downstream processes operated the way they were supposed to so that resource planning management could happen the way it was supposed to. Um, you guys ever heard say it, write it, confirm it? That's what we were doing. They said that they were gonna operate a certain way. We wrote it down and their department leaders confirmed it. Chad and Leon both worked as uh, the resource planning managers for their respective sites, and this is where we learned a ton about how they would have to work together, and we were able to improve the SOPs that we were working on um, just by them trying. All right, the results. So all documents had a clear chain of decisions, who to go with, uh, who to, go to with questions, or what resources you could look at to get more clarity, and then a purpose statement added to each of them, which you guys will see an example of here in just a second. Um, expectations were reset uh, with upstream and downstream teams and written into standard operating procedures. So even not just the standard operating procedures that we were writing, some teams even took that into their own departments and wrote their own SOPs that were consistent with what we were documenting. And Chad and Leon were able to find solutions for shared responsibilities and the SOPs were updated. So everything that we were working on, um, we initiated an improvement cycle and got more and more clear with every iteration. So the result, clarity. Everybody was able to go, ah, oh, we're getting there, right? So here's what I was talking about. This is a snapshot. Um, from one of the forums or the boards that we use in monday.com. This is material transfer management. So when one site needs something that the other site has, those requests go into here. Um, and this status column, so there's several statuses that can be picked from there. So we added this purpose statement to the document for resource planning managers who are in this board. And then we also, for every single status that could be picked, um, we detailed what it meant if it if the status was there um, and different ways that the process could break down and what how to go about making decisions according to um, like what was happening in real life. All right, week five, our final week, handoff. Was Leon actually ready to take on resource planning management in Winsville? Was all the necessary information documented? New challenge, did we actually meet the needs of Chad and Leon? Well, did we? So Cameron and I were able to make a recommendation for um, Leon's leader standard work. Now, Cameron or I, neither one of us had authority over Leon, but what we had was the knowledge. We had enough knowledge to make a recommendation that he could take um, to a conversation with his boss and say, hey, this is everything that entail that's entailed with this job. Am I actually going to have enough time to do this and manage what I'm already managing? We hosted a project handoff meeting with everyone. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone who was in that first whiteboard meeting, um, Cameron and I, Chad and Leon, everybody was in the room. We wanted to talk about what went well, what didn't go well, and what the next steps were. And we were going to hand those documents off, put them in the hands of Chad and Leon so that they could continue the continuous improvement loop. So this was that recommendation that we made for the leader standard work. So this is directly from the meeting notes from that after action meeting that we had. 
um, what went well. So documenting the process went well. You'll see a little bit more about that. I have something else I'm going to show you guys. Um, the weekly meeting cadence helped keep us on track. The plan was set out from the start, so it was clear what we needed to do. Kata improvement cycles. Now, when I say Kata, please understand that we were not doing Kata right at all. <laughs> but the um, the experimenting records helped us keep track of what we were trying, what we learned from that, and we were where we would go next. The project was scoped really well, scoped really well once the challenge was identified, so it made it really easy for us to say yes to things that we needed to work on or say no to things that just didn't fit. And Chad was open to capturing tribal knowledge. I don't know if you guys have ever ran into, I'm sure you have, where somebody says it's just tribal knowledge. A lot of times they're very reluctant to give their um, knowledge away. Um, but Chad, this was not the case. Remember, he was very motivated to get somebody else doing the job. So every time I asked open-ended questions, instead of getting annoyed, he would lean in and actually answer them. And again, utilizing Kodak to complete a rock in such a short short sprint, excuse me. Um, again, we were not doing Kata right, but um, pieces of it helped us. What didn't go well? It was bad timing. Like we said, it was the end of the year. It was super busy. We had inventory staring us down. Um, it was just not great timing. Um, it was a very tight timeline. Everything felt rushed because it was rushed. Uh, and then the surprise additions to the team, some of uh, the leadership team that was initially involved weren't brought into the loop on Cameron and I joining the team, and they had some adverse reactions to that. There was some communication that didn't happen. Um, off shift team members, so Cameron worked second shift. It was difficult for us to meet on a, at a time that worked for everybody. And training and coordination between two sites, which you'll see uh, more about that here in just a second. So. What did Chad and Leon have to say? Now, these are direct quotes from them. Chad says, the whole thing went really well. The collaboration and communication that went into documenting all the processes made things clear and easy. The documents are being used to troubleshoot problems today, and Leon is actually training someone to do the job using those documents. Pretty stinking cool. Uh, so it sounds like he had enough uh, firepower ammunition to talk to his boss about maybe somebody else doing the job. And Leon said, I felt like the processes that were that were created were good. The time constraints of this project were too quick for me, and it felt like we needed more time for the training side, one-on-one um, -on -one development, which I think he got. I stopped following this project after the end of it um, just because of the communication between the leaders, but I'm pretty sure that him and Chad were able to spend some time together. So how does this apply at your organization? Who are your Chads and Leons? Well, the answer to that question is really in more questions. Who has expressed a desire to grow? Who is overburdened? Who's close to retirement and has a bunch of knowledge that'll walk out the door when they do? Who is a silo of knowledge? Once you have the answers to those questions, um, ask more qu questions to find out how. Never underestimate the power of the five W's and an H, who, what, when, where, why, and how. Um, those two questions that I asked in the beginning, how do you feel and what do you need to feel better? Um, and then those open-ended questions that start with what, why, or how. And then as you're doing the work, make sure you get feedback early and often. These are the people that are actually going to do the work. It makes sense that they would be the ones feeding into those documents. All right, I'm going to close this out with an invitation. Um, you can come see us out at Cambridge. There are several ways that you can get involved. Um, if you are a person who has responsibility over a building and you want to um, make a healthy work environment for your hardworking people, schedule an air solutions tour. We are in the business of air quality. Um, if you want to see how Cambridge does lean, schedule a lean tour. Or if you want to see our morning meeting experience in that video when everybody was fist bumping and shaking hands and all of that, that's our morning meeting. We do that every single morning and it is a great way to kick off your day come in and see one of our morning meetings. Um, you can also connect with me. My email address is up here, or if you scan this QR code, this little one, um, that'll take you to my LinkedIn. So thank you, everybody. I really Ah, uh, Becca. Can you hear me, Becca? Oh. <laughs> Your sound again. Okay, well, everybody, thanks for participating in the webinar so today. Good. Yeah. Oh, poor Becca. <laughs> I am so sorry. There you go. <laughs> what, what was the last thing you guys heard? 
just as you're finishing. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did wonderful. Thank you to everybody who participated today. Becca, we did get one question that came in. I don't know if you can see sure. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Is it the 3M? Yes. Um, I don't think so. So we're more industrial geared. Um, we make uh, heaters for heaters, ventilation and evaporative cooling for um, like large Bay areas or car wash applications, warehouses, factories, things of that nature. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So real quick again from me, um, you will receive a link from me within 24 to 48 hours. You can see Becca at the summit coming up in April. Um, and I believe that's all. Becca, thank you again so much. And thank you to everybody who participated in today's webinar. We will see you soon. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you Becca. Bye.